care, Christian friends. I hope you brought a napkin to worship today. You're going to need it to wipe your mouth. You see, I have something in mind to share with you. You sit down at this wonderful table prepared with all the fine china and the goblets and it looks so beautiful. And then out comes the dishes of food. The first one, a bowl of sweet potatoes with the, you know, the little marshmallows melted on the top and the whipped marshmallows underneath with that brown sugar. And you grab that spoon and you lift it up and oh, it has cheese with the other potatoes. Now with the sweet potatoes, I mixed it up. Sweet potatoes, we bring it over. Oh, look at that, it's just stringing off. You get it on your plate. Then come the, the potatoes, the mashed potatoes. And they, you bring them in. Oh, the butter's kind of dripping off the spoon as you put it on your plate. And then what's next? Here come the carrots and the cauliflower. The, delicious, delicious zucchini. And it has the cheese on top of there with the salt and pepper and, and the butter dripping down on every piece and you put it on your plate. And what's next? Stuffing. And not the box stuff from the store. The way mom used to make it. Get up the night before and get your bread and cut it up into uh, little chunks and let them get on the countertop. And in the morning, they'd be crispy. And she would take those and put them in the bowl. And then she would saute the giblets from the turkey, the liver and the heart and the stomach and chop them up and get them. Oh, you would think they were not going to be good. Oh, and mix them with that. And then where did she stuff it? In the turkey. Placed in the oven to absorb all of those wonderful juices, here it comes. Mm, I can taste it. Finally, what you've been waiting for, the glazed ham with, with the turkey sliced up, and you're thinking to yourself, who's going to take a leg? Because I want a leg. That has all gone by and you think this will take care of it, but then the basket and, and the napkin comes off and steam comes off of the homemade dinner rolls. And you're thinking, I could eat that whole basket of dinner rolls all by myself. Your last bite off the plate, your stomach's full. You couldn't eat another bite if you wanted to. And then out comes the apple pie or blueberry pie with that perfect round scoop of vanilla ice cream on the top. Okay, I got a little more room. Okay, I'm done. What a great banquet. I'm looking forward to it. It's 24 days away. I count according to 24 days away is the great feast of thanksgiving can't hardly wait so why wait let's have a feast today the spiritual feast that isaiah prepares for us so that we can enjoy on this saint's triumphant this magnificent place that's prepared prayer been prepared for us at the banquet of the lamb and you dear christian friends have a seat at the table of the banquet of the lamb best place to be with the most amazing accompaniment you can imagine. Well, this is what is before us today. And when we think about having such a wonderful occasion, there are the other, the, there is the other side of the challenge that Isaiah presents to us, why we anticipate this wonderful banquet. He called it a shroud, a, a blanket, if you would. I couldn't help but think of my firstborn, Jake, when he was just first growing up and being the wonderful dad I was, I wanted to make him a nice place where he could crawl around. And as he got a little older, a place where he could hide. So we like to get boxes and I would duct tape the boxes together, make a little bit of a, a maze and then, and then take some chairs and put the blankets over the chairs. But he didn't like that. Not the blanket over the chairs. Not when he was by himself. 
when I would crawl up underneath with him, then everything was fine. I thought maybe we could use Cooper this morning and just grab a blanket and cover him up. And there, does he like being under blanket by himself? No, I would. Then he scream and yell. You, you want someone there with him? Well, listen to the blanket that Isaiah is describing for the children of Israel that covered them. The shroud that covers all peoples, the burial cloth stretched over the nations. Well, we, we know what this is. This shroud, this burial cloth is sin that covered everybody since the day of Adam and Eve. This, this sin that has covered all people, and you know it in your own lives, because you have been a fulfillment of what Jesus said. The wages of sin is death. What death? Spiritual death. Someday physical death. And the worst, eternal death. All of the above. And we know it from our own lives. This shroud that covers us. It might be in a relationship with someone you have at work when they're not pulling their weight. It might be with a health issue when you wake up and you think, oh, my back hurts, or oh, I have this ache or this pain. Should I pick on you, Michelle? In my shoulder. Ugh. The effects of sin are all around us, inescapable. The blanket of sin, as he describes it, that covers all people, the burial cloth stretched over all nations. Now, how in the world is that can we get rid of this shroud of death since the beginning of time people have tried to figure this one out maybe if i take more vitamins maybe if i exercise more maybe i can find the fountain of youth how far back you want to go where people were looking to get the fix to the shroud of death maybe there's all kinds of hopeful opportunities to get rid of the shroud of death but none of them work Death comes to everyone. Death is coming to you. Today, next month, a few years from now, it's coming. The shroud of death that covers all people. And the result of that, when people are trying to figure out how to conquer death, whether they're going to try harder, whether they're trying to do more good things, whether they're going to compare themselves to others and say, hey, look at me, I'm better. No, when death does that, it only ends up in anxiety and in depression and in failure. We can't do it. Isaiah describes this. He says, it is the recipe that is going to hurt everyone. The burial cloth stretched over all nations. It was just Halloween, so as I was writing this sermon, I couldn't help but think of Halloween stuff. And I thought of the example of one of my neighbors, uh, Mrs. Mankey. Uh, I recently buried her son, Evan, from Oklahoma City. But I'll never forget Mrs. Mankey. She lived two houses up and one over. And on Halloween, she had the best, scariest decorations. Because it was her. Like the Wizard of Oz witch. With the black hat and the green face. And she had a big black cauldron in front of her house. And she had the dried ice in there. And she was stirring. And I mean to tell you. If you were going to go up to that porch. You get She had the laugh. <laughs> so, oh my word. She wasn't an inflatable poofy thing on the front yard. She scared us. That's the, 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 the feeling and the emotion and what the Lord wanted the children of Israel to understand. This is an inescapable danger in their neighborhood. And so he said, this is the burial cloth that is stretched over all the nations. And it has stretched to us. It's easy to find that evidence in the dirty words that come out of our mouth during the week. In our misprioritization of our relationship with God compared to the relationship with our families. The devil comes with his temptations and he wants us 
to be underneath that burial cloth by ourselves trying to escape. And so he will, he will bring all the temptations into our life to direct us away from the solution. He will say, it's more important for you to feel good about yourself and to have your escape and, and maybe have that little good feeling. So let's, let's abuse alcohol or drugs. Or he comes and he helps us to be tempted by thinking, what is the, what is the sport that I can put all my effort and energy into instead of my savior? Or he, he tempts us with a very simple one. Let's just be lazy. Didn't I just tell you a second ago that you were guaranteed a seat at the wedding supper of the Lamb? How would that be possible? Unless the Lord would come to his people in his grace, undeserved love, and give him a promise. He said, on this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that covers all people. Well, that's the best place to be on this mountain. Wait, where is it? Where is this mountain that he speaks of? Where is this wonderful place? Well, for the Israelites in the Old Testament, it was Mount Zion. That's where God would come to his people in the Holy of Holies. The cloud would come down on the temple. He would meet his people there at Mount Zion, Jerusalem. Today, he says, on this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that covers all peoples. The burial cloth stretched over all nations. Well, God gave us his promise there in his holy word. There God promises that he has destroyed death for you and me. And to make it even better, he says, therefore be baptized and have the assurance your sins are washed away. And today, as we celebrate the Lord's Supper together, he comes with his promise that he has broken death for us. And the way he says it is way different than you would expect. When you go to a funeral, you know what you see in the casket. Death. Did you hear what Isaiah said happens? He has swallowed up death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. He will take away the shame of his people throughout the earth. For the Lord has spoken. There in the gospel. God gives his people the assurance that they have a place at the heavenly feast. The best place that we could possibly be. In the presence of the best company. Yeah, Isaiah describes it. Uh, he, the best company is to be with Jesus. Now, how and where can we enjoy this heavenly feast? There are lots of examples that we could give how an undeserving sinner enjoys the foretaste of that heavenly feast. Let's go with Jesus into the garden of Gethsemane. And there is Judas betraying him. And he offers Judas that forgiveness, that feast that Judas rejects. Peter, seeing Jesus being uh, betrayed, grabs his sword and wants to save Jesus. And what does Jesus say? No, Peter, put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not? Drink the cup my father has given me. It is Christ Jesus who is willing to fight against death for you and me. There at the cross, when Jesus offered his life for the penalty of your sin. And there at the cross, Jesus gave you his holiness. The holiness you need for eternal life in heaven. Jesus is with you. The best company you can have. There is Jesus. And that's what we remember when we put our loved ones into a casket or into an urn. That's what we remember. Jesus promises to be with us. And he promises that our loved ones are with him in glory everlasting. Our thoughts are turned to our loved ones in heaven, now in their souls, in heaven with Jesus, spending their time with the glorious ones that have gone before us. They are the saints triumphant, the best company that you could ever imagine 
to be with. This is the company that you and I can enjoy because of what Jesus did. I'll dare you, the next time you go to a funeral and you look and you see your loved one dead in a casket or in the urn, I want you to think of what Isaiah said. Death has been swallowed up. Do you know what's really in the casket? Death. Christ put death in the casket and closed its lid forever so that our loved one who is not there, they're in heaven, their souls in the glory of God have not been confined even by death itself. This is the promise Isaiah said, on the mountain of the Lord, he has swallowed up death forever. That's our celebration of All Saints Day, where we can enjoy the wonderful meal with the loved ones. Well, what wonderful meal would you like to have today? If you could go out to lunch with somebody, maybe a president, you know, Washington, Lincoln, Reagan. Maybe not. Maybe you want to have lunch today with some movie star from Hollywood. Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? Mm. How about you have lunch with a, a sports star? Your favorite sports person? Eh, no. How about you get out and you have the invitation today that you get to have lunch with maybe your mom or dad or a husband or wife that has died and gone to heaven and they're gonna come have lunch with you today. Well, now we're talking. That would get my attention. You have the invitation to the perfect seat at the perfect lunch with all your loved ones and with Christ himself. You will have lunch today because of Christ who comes to us through the bread and wine with, in, with, and under the bread and wine. Jesus gives us his body in the celebration of the meal. He gives us his blood in the celebration of the meal. And I've checked this over a couple times with my brothers at our circuit meetings and they agree when we come to the Lord's Supper, we are having lunch with the communion of saints in heaven and earth. Lunch with our loved ones. The more important, lunch with Christ. The one who gave us the perfect place to be here in God's house. The one who promises he's with us every day. And the one who promises someday, not through faith, but with your very eyes, you will be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. All of this for Jesus' sake, as we celebrate saints triumphant. Amen.